right about halftime of that NC State Clemson clash that kicks off at 2 p.m. Eastern time, a few hours to the south. And you coming from that region would know a little bit better how exactly how many hours south in Jacksonville. We've got a Georgia Florida clash that uh, the Bulldogs come in as a two touchdown favorite in this game. Uh, Florida's been up and down. They are coming off an exciting win uh, on the road against South Carolina. Graham Mertz had to put it up uh, in the fourth quarter and uh, threw for a career high 423 mm. yards in that game as Billy Napier gets a big road win. Uh, but of course, Georgia has notoriously struggled for them uh, against the likes of Auburn and South Carolina. But their last time out against a reasonable opponent just clocked Kentucky then defeated Vanderbilt, so maybe they're they're on the mend. But unfortunately, Brock Bowers, one of the best players in college football, not on the mend. Uh, he is out. So how do you size this one up, and do you give Florida any kind of shot? Well, the first thing is I'm based here in West Central Florida in the Tampa Bay area, humongous Gator area, as you know. So we're about three hours south of Jacksonville. You mentioned Raleigh to Jacksonville, probably about five and a half, six hours by car, depending on how fast Mark Rogers drives. I don't know. Uh, but interesting in my area, humongous Gator area, and they're conflicted. Uh, a lot of them don't think Billy Napier's the guy, and they don't want to see Billy Napier winning the biggest games, believe it or not, against Tennessee, Georgia, Florida State, if you don't believe in him long term. Uh, and so now this is a real test for them. Yes, they got a, a big win at South Carolina, but this is a Godzilla on both sides of the ball that has blown them away each of the last two years. I know some different players for Georgia that have moved on. Fascinating. Both teams off the bye week. You mentioned no Bowers. Uh, here, Florida wants to run the ball. They want to squeeze the time down some in this game. I don't know how well they're going to be able to run it. This is an amazing rivalry. I have to confess here with you, Mark, I have not been to this one in person. This is one of the ones I've not been to. I've done Auburn, Alabama. I've done Oklahoma, Texas, been to those. I've done UNC, Duke, and basketball. I've not done this one. Um, the Don't call it the cocktail party game. It's going to, you know, half the stadium orange and blue, half the stadium black and red. It's going to be fascinating because Georgia is favored big here on whether or not they're going to put it on Florida or does does Napier's team off the bye week show something, run the ball, hang in the game and have a chance at the end. We're about to find out. And most of these Gator fans are knowledgeable enough and rabid enough to know that, hey, recruiting is the lifeblood, of course, and Billy Napier doing a nice job there. Not necessarily better than Kirby Smart, but better than Dan Mullen certainly invested in recruiting. So there is that on Billy Napier's side. But uh, yeah, it's it's a rough stretch for him because after he gets past Georgia, which is most likely a loss, there's LSU, there's Florida State, there's a Missouri team that's only got one loss. <laughs> right. It's a rough go. Well, and in Napier's case, he obviously had success at Louisiana, but I think a lot of Gator fans are questioning some of the game management stuff. Now, they were very good at the end of the South Carolina game, and then they won it, obviously, on the touchdown to Pearsall in the final minute. Uh, but game management is something they question. They question uh, Graham Mertz out of the transfer portal. Here we go again as being the best option at quarterback uh, right now. Make no mistake, though, he can make a lot of friends and silence a lot of critics. If they can find a way to win this game, you now become very relevant for those three letters CFP, believe it or not, if you can win this game. So let's see. Long way to go for Florida. It's one thing to hope for that and then to actually pull it off against a Georgia team that, again, has had a lot of success. And again, I know you love the nostalgia because I, I go back to when uh, Herschel Walker, when I first moved to the state of Florida 40 years ago, Herschel Walker dominated the Gators in three games. I mean, he practically built his NFL resume on the three Florida games. So that's like the early 80s, Vince Dooley, the Dogs, Buck Ballou at quarterback, et cetera. Well, then you move into like the 2000s, and Tim Tebow and Florida destroyed Georgia, basically. They dominated Georgia for the most part in those games, and he was tremendous. So this thing ebbs and flows. Now it's back in Georgia's favor again, where they have won, what, four of the last five, I believe it is, or five of the last six. Uh, and then the last two were basically runaways. Will they put it on Florida again on Saturday? Is it, If it's a big loss, then all the talk starts again about is Billy Napier the wrong guy here, especially with that gauntlet schedule that you mentioned? Well, Georgia slept walk through the early portion of the season, but a lot of people talked about Kentucky presenting a challenge, and maybe they woke up in that one 
and put down the uh, gauntlet 51 13 and then vandy was you know vandy's vandy and so georgia kind of just mailed that in but uh made sure that uh, they were good to go there so yeah georgia florida i'm glad that you get to call this one and experience one of uh, college football's great rivalries i have not either been to a georgia florida game or for you gator fans we know florida georgia game <laughs> sorry so <laughs> you have to say it the right way depending on whom you're talking to uh, but I mean, there's so much, there's so much in that rivalry. And this is what we love, whether you're talking about this game or the Michigan, Ohio state game, which is up in your part of the world or Auburn, Alabama, or on and on Oklahoma, Texas, like I mentioned, army Navy, you know, players from this series, you know, coaches, Steve Spurrier from this series. We mentioned uh, Vince Dooley, urban Meyer, uh, in this now Kirby smart with the back-to-back -back national titles. There's so many different personalities that are involved in these rivalry games and in this. And this is this is absolutely uh, hatred for, for these two programs. And what's interesting is they're going to have to take a break for a couple of years and not play in that stadium in Jacksonville. And there is talk, talk of, will they do it on campuses uh, like they did back in the mid-90s before the Jacksonville Jaguars became the NFL team and they were having to work on the stadium. So they played two games on the campuses, Mark, in Gainesville and in Athens. There's talk they might play this game, dare we say, at the Daytona International Speedway where they do the Daytona 500. Can you imagine the Florida-Georgia game at Daytona? The Jaguars are talking about playing a home game or two on the infield of the Daytona International Speedway. Might they be looking at doing that for Florida, Georgia? I don't know, but that's that's a reality coming. They got to play the game somewhere because basically for two football seasons, they're not going to be able to play it in Jacksonville while they redo the stadium. So it's going to be interesting in the right. I'm up for that. I think that's cool. I like football games and baseball stadiums. And didn't Virginia Tech and Tennessee do something similar? Bingo. Bristol, Bristol, yes. the, the small track in Bristol, Tennessee. They played there. And I believe Tennessee may have played a second game there. Uh, as well against somebody else. So they have done creative different things uh, with some games and some venues. And you're right. We see a bowl game at Fenway Park uh, or at Yankee Stadium in the Northeast. So a Wrigley Field. Remember, they, they played in Illinois. What was it? Illinois and Northwestern. And somebody forgot to measure off that the end zone was not 10 yards. Am I yes. right up against the wall? So they constantly had to adjust and say, okay, if you've driven inside of the 50 yard line, we're going to switch ends of the field because that end zone down there is 10 yards, but the Crazy. end zone down here is not 10 yards. Somebody didn't check that out in advance at Wrigley field with, with what yeah. they were doing. So new venues can be dangerous in that regard, but Florida, Georgia, somewhere other than Jacksonville, it will be interesting where it ends up. We'll see. Yes. So warning to any one out there that's involved with the logistics of these setups. So measure the field, measure your, your space, and then you'll be all right. You won't have to run an end zone corner into a brick wall. Yes. Uh, not advisable. Good. Not advisable. PJ Rivas, you can hear him on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers radio call on the sideline doing the Buccaneers. Who do the Buccaneers play next? Buccaneers and Buffalo Bills midweek yes. as we're doing this. So I'm headed off to Buffalo. I'm shuffling off to Western New York for NFL duties, but I will circle back to Clemson NC State. So I'm calling that game on Compass Media Networks again with Steve Berline Saturday afternoon. But I'm going to have eyeballs everywhere on this college football Saturday, including Florida, Georgia, including Ohio State. And Wisconsin and, and all the games up at uh, up at the top that we're going to be interested in throughout this Saturday. Love it. We're, it it'll be November. It's going to be November before uh, we know it here and the stretch run of the season. We're about to be there, Mark. Absolutely. TJ, we appreciate you stopping by, sir. Always great to be with you. Get back to me anytime. Love to be back with you later in the year.